Hello, I'm Mario Toniguzzi, Managing Editor of Canada's Podcast, taking care of business today with Steve Messler, who is co-founder of Classroom Champions, and Seth Rosenzweig, who is the new CEO of the organization. Thanks, uh, gentlemen, for joining us today. Thanks, Thanks for having us on. All right, let's uh, start with... Uh, Maybe uh, Steve uh, can answer this question because, uh, you know, you're the co-founder of Classroom Champions. Uh, give us a sort of a rundown of what Classroom Champions is and what it does. Well, um, I will jump into that. Thanks for having us on, Mario. Uh, always a pleasure to be here and always a pleasure to talk to your audience about what the, the good work that's being done at Classroom Champions. Classroom Champions is an organization that schools and school districts and school boards turn to when they are facing challenges with, you know, trying to trying to improve student engagement, trying to improve student health and well-being and mental health when they're trying to improve uh, teacher engagement as well. Um, and ultimately, we leverage the power of athletes and their champion mindset to help kids set goals, learn how to set goals and achieve them, persevere through their problems and and challenges and, you know, lead through adversity. And Steve, how long has uh, uh, Classroom Champions been around? Oh boy, uh, we're coming around right around 15 years now at this point since I was the, since I was the athlete and my sister, my co-founder, my sister was the, the, the person helping facilitate it with the, with the students. And we've been in, we've been in Canada now since uh, 2013, since the, the fall going into the Sochi Winter Olympics in 2014. Okay. So now there is a, a uh, bit of a transition in the in the leadership uh, of uh, this organization. Maybe we can uh, talk a little bit about that of what's happening, and uh, feel free both of you to jump in on this one. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to start, Steph, and I'll I'll, I'll pass it off. Um, you know, every organization, as you grow and mature, uh, it's you know always taking stock and looking at the leadership and looking at where you want the organization to go. And there was a time when I woke up a couple of years ago and realized Classroom Champions is ready. I came here, to, I left my private practice, I left consulting, I left uh, the corporate world to come and build Classroom Champions into, into a certain thing, into uh, where I thought it deserved to be. And it, all of a sudden I woke up a couple of years ago and it was there. And as leaders and as founders, sometimes it's really hard to actually see that endpoint. You can just keep on getting bigger and you can keep doing more and whether it's bringing in more revenue or whatever it is, you can just keep on moving those goalposts. And I woke up and we realized that it's it's time to make a change. It's time for somebody with a fresh perspective to help grow Classroom Champions into the next level or the next five levels of where it is. And that's, you know, that's where Seth comes in. Okay, Seth? And I think from my lens, you know, I, um, when you meet Steve, it's hard to, it's hard to not get inspired, right? And I think for me, I had gone, gone through a, a major health event um, a couple of years ago and thought about what I wanted my overtime to look like. And I've been working on a different organization where we helped it to kind of scale and, and realize a certain potential and saw that Steve was building something really special. And, and it brought together three things that I was passionate about. One is obviously the power of education. Um, as we look at economic mobility, edu there's nothing more important than education. The second is the importance of mental health and social emotional well-being and the fact that we have an epidemic going on in the world around mental health challenges but no one was really looking at it in my perspective from a proactive lens it was all about how do we treat how do we look at solutions from crises and really how do we um, solve problems versus how do we prevent problems and the third was the power and the platform of sports mm. right and the fact that sports can be leveraged both from an athlete perspective who can kind of gain influence but also from the life lessons you learn through the power, whether it's youth sports or as Steve's in, through Steve's lens, um, you know, being a, a world class Olympic athlete and winner, um, I think that the opportunity to can create that intersectionality between those three things and create systems change in an educational arena that really needs it now. Mm -hmm. We can be a partner for these school districts and these school systems and these schools to help them achieve the brightness we hope that our kids will achieve through the power of education. And while they, you know, solve some of the mental health challenges and utilize the power of sports. So for me, it was a no brainer. We met kind of serendipitously yeah. through a mutual relationship that thought we could help each other. Um, and it just happened to be the right time for both of us to think about our next adventure. 
Let's talk about the reach uh, over the years. Uh, maybe Steve can answer this one. Uh, you know, how many, uh, I don't know if, if you can give me some numbers to just give me a sense of, uh, you know, the reach of uh, the organization over the years. Yeah, no, it's a great question. And I mean, ultimately, that's been one of the goals of Classroom Champions is to try to, if the work is important and good, then we should try to have as many kids be able to access it as possible. So we have, through our in-house programs and our curriculum and our mentorship program, um, this year alone, we're reaching 50,000, about approximately 50,000 children across North America and another few hundred thousand um, within another in-house program that is called Kid Power that we acquired from UNICEF a couple of years ago. That's physical activity and, and well-being um, on that side. Over the, you know, again, since we've been in Canada, we have reached over 5 million children through both our programs on a regular basis, as well as partnerships we've done with the you know, Canadian Olympic Committee and the north side of the border or NBC and the southern side of the border uh, as well. So really trying to, the premise is we think these are the kinds of skills that kids need to learn, setting goals, persevering, um, being a leader, being on a team. These are the things we hire for in the business world. And then ultimately, um, we think that athletes are a really good vessel for kids to learn these kinds of skills. Seth, um, as you look uh, forward, um, what are your goals or priorities and where do you want to take the, the organization? I mean, Steve and I both think really big. I mean, that's, I think, you know, and not, not big for the sake of ego, but big for the sake of we have an obligation, right? Because we think we can really help. And so I think the way we look at it is we want to embed ourselves into the fabric of the educational system throughout North America and potentially beyond, you know, using Canada as our prototype, right? Our innovation lab, our incubator to develop that playbook and then scale this, you know, to really make sure that everyone can benefit, has access to it and can have equitable outcomes in it. And so I think my ambition is how do we make this really scalable in a way that it can impact as many kids, teachers and athletes as possible. But I think in order to get there, you know, we're looking at kind of how do we prioritize ourselves? So the first thing is obviously investing in our in our curriculum and in, in our technology platform, in our athlete mentorship program to make sure that we've set that up both from a quality perspective and from a scalability perspective. The third is we have a tremendous amount of work to do. And, and you know, being on your podcast, for example, matters because brand awareness is a way for us to really ensure that people know about us and they know that they can access us. Um, as we do that and as we scale, obviously having the resources to be able to ensure capacity so that we never have to turn away a classroom or a teacher or a district. Um, and then I think, you know, from my lens is once we develop our growth strategy um, and understand the efficacy of our program through measurement and evaluation and really being able to prove out what we've already been doing, um, then we're going to look at real scalability and think about how do we kind of look at a regional strategy the way we go I think national in Canada is to make it feel hyper local. And we want to figure out the right approach to be able to support our kids, teachers, and athletes to reach that scale, right? We can't sacrifice quality just to grow. So I'm pretty excited about our long-term vision and ambition. And I think it's relatively in line with, with, you know, how Steve got me excited about this was his ambition. You know, you know, Mario, and, and I like, you could see why I'm excited about having Seth here at Classroom Champions and, and, and steering the ship. Because he's also, he's done that. He was at an organization called Team Impact before that. Uh, he's He has a track record of understanding how to do this. And now he's, you know, getting to do this in a space of education where there's a lot more opportunity to reach into every community across the, you know, across North America values education. As he, as he said, that's the, you know, econ economic key to mobility is through education. And um, I'm just, I'm excited to have Seth analyze what's happening through this transition right now. I mean, transitioning in any organization is difficult. Going from one CEO to the next is difficult. Going from a founder-led company to the to the second CEO with the organization in the history of the organization is the most difficult transition that any company, for profit or nonprofit, can go through. So, how we've been, you know, I'm proud of how we've handled this so far, and how we've, as an organization, the board on Classroom Champion side, have run into it. How Seth, you know, he's two weeks in today uh, to his role, but he was also really thoughtful and took a running start at it. And, you know, the month leading into it after he, um, you know, after we all made the decision together, he's you know, got a running start into it. He was here in Calgary for a champion chats event. That was um, about a month ago now. 
Uh, so he was able to to meet and get immersed. And we, you know, his first school visit that he's taken while being a part of Classroom Champions was to Six Sigma. So his first school visit in all of North America was to a Canadian First Nation. And I think that's a really powerful signal that we want to send here in Canada that we're going to do more and we're going to lean in even more with them. And, and you know, for Seth to be able to get that experience, I thought was really special. What, um, uh, feel free, uh, if either one of you or both to, to answer this, but what is it about, I guess, uh, athletes uh, that that is important, you know, for them to be mentors uh, to uh, and to uh, inspirations for students? Why, why athletes? Why not business people or <laughs> whatever? I mean, it's a really good question. I think there's, it's multi layered in my in my mind. One is, I think, generally people look up to athletes, um, especially athletes that have achieved success. Right. Mm -hmm. They can influence, especially younger people, you know, may see them as heroes, may see them as, um, at, you know, may see them as people they want to aspire to be. And so one, you already have that built in kind of incentive for them to listen. The mm -hmm. second thing is, and I'm not anywhere near the accolades of Steve, but having played youth sports and having played, you know, at certain levels, you learn so much about life by being, being an athlete, whether that's a singular athlete or whether that's being part of a team. And I think whether that's grit or perseverance or how to get back up when you fall down or how to set goals for yourself, all of the things that Steve mentioned, how to receive feedback, which a lot of us, even at you know our ages, aren't great at. Like, how do you look at the positive attributes that you can learn from being part of sports and apply them to the game of life? And I think for me, that's what's so inspiring is you have someone you know, men and women who are inspiring to people who also can teach the how they achieve success that are very applicable to life and success in business, success in life, success in relationships, whatever it is. And so I think that that, that combination is really, really powerful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, and I'd love to even, can I, can I, can I add layer on there, Mario? Yeah, you bet. Awesome. Um, I think, from I, I being on with everything Seth said, uh, I think it was really well well articulated and 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 thoughtful of of why athletes because I think it's a really good question and it's a question that we get from school districts a lot too, and I think everything that Seth said is being on as well as sport is demonstrable, and what I mean by that is kids can see it, so business kids can't see winning and losing, mm. they can't see the they can't see cheating they can't see um, fair play happening. It's not a, it's not a de demonstrable thing that you can, one can observe in sport. You can, you can see when somebody cheated, you can see that happening. Uh, and then they get a penalty and then they get penalized for that, which is, you know, in a lot of ways, the way life, you know, life can work. Um, you see somebody literally fall down and literally get back up. And so you're seeing these things. So it, it makes it, kids don't have the metacognitive ability until they are, you know, into their mid, late teen years to actually like see something, hear something, go home, reflect on it, and then think about how they're, they, they can't, metacognition would be the, to be to, to define it, it would be thinking about thinking. They don't have the ability to think about their thinking quite yet. So mm -hmm. when they can see something and then they hear it from somebody and those, the words and the things that they see on screen can attach, they can learn those lessons. Uh, it's apolitical. In whether you're here in Alberta or whether you're, you know, across the U.S., education is being leveraged in politics one way or the other. Yeah. Um, again, it's not so bad up here yet, but Mario, as you and I know, living up here, if it's if it's happening pervasively in America, it's it's bound to to seep its way up here in some ways in our politics. So sport is apolitical. You can go to, you know, downtown Toronto, or you can go to. Um, you know, you can go to, you know, cameras Alberta and everybody's watching sports. Uh, yeah. and, and I think that helps be a unifier. And then lastly, look, there's a reason why my six-year-old thinks firefighters are awesome because she thinks the fire trucks are cool. And she thinks that all those things, which means she would want to be that when she grows up. And that person is actually that they actually, that person's that person. So we tell kids to dream big. We tell them they can be whatever they want to be. How many people are they surrounded by on a day-to-day -day basis that mm -hmm. had a dream when they were 10 years old and are actually living those dreams right now? And athletes are those people. And I think for those three extra reasons, I, I have just found athletes to be such powerful drivers of, of 
outcomes in schools when it's done in a proper way through, again, curriculum and, and most importantly, through the teachers. All right. Wonderful. Well, thanks, gentlemen, for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Appreciate it. Thank you for having us on, Mario. All right. That was uh, Stephen, uh, Kess, uh, <laughs> Stephen Messler, who was co-founder of Classroom Champions, and Seth Rosenzweig, who is uh, the new CEO of Classroom Champions. I'm Mario Taniguzzi, Managing Editor of Canada's Podcast, taking care of business today. Thanks for joining us.